Hi, I know I'm sorry it's taken me a while to get these last two videos out, but I am working on it. And here's section seven. I'll get eight out very shortly. But section seven is banking and tools. And I had a couple of previous students that graduated that told me they're taking the exam and the sections that they have posted, they've passed. So they have a little bit left. And then remember, after that, you have the pro advisor exam and I'll get that out as well. Um, but I'm really happy to hear that so many of you are doing well in the exam. So let's finish it up. Um, section seven is banking and tools. And the topic I'm going to cover is bank feeds, um, the QBO receipt capture, bank reconciliation process, bank rules, and reoccurring transactions. Um, there's a link here. I'll try to remember to put it um, in the description. Um, it discusses bank feeds to great lengths. Um, and, and the training videos are really excellent. There's, well, I think they can show a couple of more videos on it, but they have a couple of videos that give you the visualization. And I have one screen that I gave you that you can visualize with the filters. Um, bank feeds are through the banking center. Your bank sends the transactions listed in the monthly statement. It's then linked to the client's records. How can you filter the for review tab to see all the transactions QuickBook Online thinks it has found a good match for? Well, the answer to that is to click on the recognize tab. Where can you go in the bank center to review downloaded bank feed transactions that have already been matched to existing transactions in QuickBooks Online? By clicking on the review tab. With the bank feed, you should complete match transactions first and then move on to your ad transactions. And then you should match download bank fee transactions to invoice payments, sales receipts, deposits, or open invoices. So the key here also is making sure that you complete your match transactions first before you start adding, because you don't want to duplicate anything. Another question, where can you go in the banking center to review downloaded bank fee transactions that have already been matched to existing transactions in QBO? You'd click the review tab for that. Three ways to add receipts to QuickBooks Online receipt capture features. One, snap a picture via the mobile app. That's the PDF, JPEG, PNG, or GIF. Forward a receipt to the following address from a registered email address. That's receipts at quickbooks.com. And the last one is upload a picture via a browser. So those are the three ways to do the receipt capture feature. Two employees want to be able to forward receipts to the QBO, taking advantage of the receipt capture feature. How would you be able to enable this, adding an additional email in QBO? By clicking on banking, then going to receipts, and then selecting manage senders. Four characteristics of the QBO receipt capture features are, one, the receipt capture feature uses optical character recognition, OCR technology, to read and transform receipt data to QBO. Two, if QuickBooks Online finds an expense already entered in QBO, it will suggest that you match the receipt to the existing transaction. Three, QBO will fill in the fields it can for the expense using the OCR data. And four, you can assign and payee account, payment date, category, description, amount, and memo to the expense transaction in the review screen. Bank reconciliation. What link do you select on the reconciliation report screen to run the reconciliation report? That's after you've completed it and you've sent it. You would select the link history by account, and then all your reconciliations would be there, and you'd select which one you want to, which reconciliation report you want to save or print. What is a common duplicate transaction error? Instead of matching an existing transaction, it was added as a new one, duplicating that transaction. How would an accountant user undo a reconciliation? And remember, that would be an accountant user. If you're using a self-employment, you cannot do that. You would need a QBO A user to undo a reconciliation with QBO. On the reconciliation history screen, you would select the drop-down arrow next to the review report and select undo. I had a, I had a client that did that, and they actually had to open up a QBO A account just to undo a reconciliation. So uh, you could also call the 1-800 number and they can review, uh, they can reverse it for you if you beg them. Uh, sticking with bank reconciliation, Maria has been using proper workflow for her sales process by creating invoices, receiving payments, and recording deposits using the transaction screens in QBO. Most likely she will be able to blank downloaded deposits to blank transactions in the banking center. And that would be, she'd be able to match those deposits to existing transactions. 
banking rules, three statements regarding banking rules. Banking rules can be prioritized. Banking rules can be copied, edited, or deleted. And you can automatically add transactions to the register using banking rules. Reoccurring transaction. A client has asked for your help to set up a reoccurring transaction. She wants to create a reoccurring sales receipt. This is the process she has followed so far. So she clicked on the gear icon, selected reoccurring transactions, and then selected new. I know I've shown this, this process to you quite a few times. Then what does she do? Well, then she would select the type of transaction she wants to reoccur. So she would select whatever it is that she wants. Remember, I showed you that process. In this case, she would reoccur a sales receipt. Changing filters. So this is the picture I gave you. It's on the next screen. When working on a reconciliation, the reconciliation screen has all the transaction data you need. On the reconciliation screen, by default, the list of transactions hides the transactions that occurred after the statement end date. To show all transactions, including those after the end date, you would blank or select the clear filter view all link in the same area to remove all filters. So which option would you fill in this space? The answer is select the X button next to the left of the statement, statement ending date filter in the upper left-hand corner of the transaction list. So I was reading that and I thought that sounds a little confusing, so I wanted to show you a picture. So here's your reconciliation page before you actually have completed it. And those of you, I think I'm gonna do a video on reconciliation, but this is where you click all the ones you had, you got your bank statement in the mail, you're looking at your bank statement and according to your um, transactions listed in QBO, you come down and you check all the ones that you see match. So suppose you have, transactions that were not within the date of the um, the bank, you would then click over here. See, this is where it makes a little sense because you see on the bottom I said, select the X button to the left of the statement ending date filter. So this is what they're talking about. You would click this X and that would undo that filter of going only up to the ending date. Or you would click the clear filter view all link. And the last one, making changes after reconciling. Erin has previously recorded all credit card activity manually using the expense transaction screen and reconciled the account using the reconcil reconciliation tool. After connecting her credit card in the banking center, she doesn't see any matches for the transactions she previously entered and reconciled. So what does she need to do? She needs to select the reconciled transaction, then click batch actions, and then select modify selected. So that's section seven, and I will be getting you section eight very quickly, as well as I will give you that bank feed link in the comments. Thank you.